Hi, this is Alan Boris, and this is the first of two lectures in the section on territory and place names, cultures, culture areas, and native organizations of Cook Inlet. So the big questions. Uh, the overall question we want to uh, focus on is um, uh, First of all, the anthropological question, and second, the tribal question, to distinguish between anthropology and a tribal perspective. Anthropology asks the question, why are cultures organized the way they are? This has a long history, goes starts back in the late 1800s, maybe even before, and embraces that idea of culture and why cultures are the way they are. This is a little different from the tribal question, at least in Alaska. Tribal, tribal people ask, who are we and what are our values? Both invoke the idea of culture, but the aims of each are a little different. Generally speaking, it doesn't matter how and why different cultures are organized the way they are from a tribal perspective. You're interested in values, how to perpetuate those values, how to clarify those values. They have to do in some cases with universal human values, respect, love, but also specific cultural values, how the land is perceived, how the animals are thought of. So we have two different perspectives here. Uh, we're going to be dealing with both in this course, uh, and it's important for us to be clear um, uh, of the two different perspectives. Anthropologists will write from the standpoint of the first one. Here's a, a sort of a chart of some of those perspectives, um, uh, paradigms, if you will, that uh, that anthropologists use to understand why cultures are the way they are. I think it's accurate to say that no one is the right one. All have val validity, all have things that uh, where they can't explain everything. And if you can't explain everything, it's imperfect. Uh, a lot of anthropological, anthropological writing having to do with Cook Inlet is from the standpoint of cultural ecology the idea that cultures uh, adapt to an ecological setting and their institutions are transformed and shaped by that adaptation. Um, all of the others, it's not, we don't have to go through them all now, but have different degrees of validity, ranging from deterministic uh, to non-deterministic. Symbolic and interp interpretive anthropology, for example, doesn't uh, look so much at the um, uh, deterministic aspects of culture, but more what are the symbols and how do those symbols shape people's interpretation of their world. We also need to be clear in some terms. Anthropologists classify things. They use terminology. They use it in a specific way. Culture area is a set of cultures that are generally similar, uh, generally uh, have general feat uh, features that are similar, often language, but not necessarily, uh, that can um, uh, that cause a for communication between one culture or another in an area. A culture then is that specifically bound unit that people identify with and or they identify with a regional band. These terms are similar in many ways to the idea of a language family, uh, a group of languages that have a similar structure, a similar grammar, a similar sound system, uh, but are discrete as languages and within languages you have dialects often dialects are sometimes regional, they can also be gender, they dialects, they can be uh, according to class dialects, they certainly can be according to age dialects. So uh, these are sort of similar levels of classification. 
The Denina of the Kenai River, for example, would be considered part of the western subarctic culture area. The term is Denina. It both ref reflects the language and the culture area culture. The Katnuitana, for example, would be the Kenai uh, Kenai River Denina, probably because Seeloff is also considered part of that. Uh, similar terms, the language family is the Athabascan or Dene language family. The language is the same as the culture, Denina. Uh, uh, Deninak, technically, is Denina language. And the Kenai or Outer Inlet dialect would be a dialect within Denina. We'll sp speak more about languages and dialects and so on later in the course. So this map is both a map of culture area and also serves as a language map, uh, but its design is primarily as a culture area map. So this is the Northern Dene or Northern Athabascan culture area. It ranges on the east from the Mackenzie borderlands, uh, the Chipewyan, the Yellowknife, the Dog Rib, and so on. Uh, to the Arctic Cordillera, to the Alaska Plateau, to those south of the Alaska Range. This um, terminology is primarily from James Van Stone, written in a book called Athabascan Adaptations. The meaning of the colors are this. The, uh, what on my screen is sort of the tan area to the right, or the peach area, I guess, to the right where the Chipewyan, uh, beaver, hare, and so on, the Mackenzie borderlands are. Uh, this is, from a subsistence standpoint, these are primarily caribou hunters. There are no anadromous fish in this area, or if there are, they're not of substantial amount. There are no salmon, in other words. There's a lot of white fish, but they're lake fish. Uh, they don't migrate. The caribou do migrate, so as a primary subsistence food, the people are highly nomadic, small groups, small bands, moving about, uh, nomadic in the sense, not necessarily the sense of aimless wandering, but nomadic in the sense of following a seasonal round, but being very flexible to be able to follow the movement of caribou herds. They don't live in uh, substantial houses, they live in tents, even in winter and they're, as I say, highly nomadic. As you move into the tan areas, and we can add the sort of the teal area, the Alaska Plateau area, salmon become more or less an important factor. Less so in the subarctic cordillera. The salmon have a long way to go upstream, intercepted often by the Tlingit of the coast. Um, but nevertheless, salmon are important, uh, as are caribou and other foods, so sort of a mixed area, uh, still tending to be nomadic. Into the Alaska Plateau, salmon become more important, but still uh, semi-sedentary. When you get to the area south of the Alaska Range, the Denina and the Atna are sedentary groups because they are primarily salmon fishers. The salmon come to them. You uh, have your village in a place where the salmon will come and you also supplement that with other foods of course caribou hunting, bear, many plants c collected uh, much of what we'll talk about when we talk about subsistence for the Denina um, but the primary point here is that the the environment or the ecology tends to shape the cultures from highly nomadic to the east to sedentary and uh, uh, a very uh, prescribed clan system among the Denina and the Atna to mobilize labor for the collection of salmon. Culture areas, Northern Dene. This is a language map. This is the older version, I think. There's a newer one out now. That's very good uh, for the um, uh, Alaska Native Languages. The colors on this might not be true, but uh, 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 to the original map, but the original map colors are selected to reflect degrees of similarity and dissimilarity in the languages. 
So the red hues are Dene or Athabascan languages. The blue and green hues are Eskimo Aleut languages. Uh, and the, the, the degree is the color difference in the original map is meant to reflect the degree of difference. This is spelled Tenaina uh, for the Denaina here. Uh, and uh, we will talk about that on this slide. The original pronunciation is Denina, uh, at least in the outer inlet or Kenai dialect, and largely in the upper inlet or, sub or Susitna area. Uh, in the um, uh, inland area, uh, it is often said Denaina. So Denina, Denaina, it's not a matter of who's right. It's, uh, it's a matter of uh, local variation. Um, the T spelling came from Russian times. For reasons I'm not entirely sure of, uh, the T's, uh, the D initial D's became T's as Russians transcribed Denina words, and usually they wrote them in German, the lingua franca of its time. So Denina became Tenina and sort of stuck in the literature. But we've, uh, Jim Carrey and Jim Fall and others have been active in using the more accurate pronunciation and spelling Denina. So this is uh, one map of many of Denina territory. Here I've separated it into the eastern and western Denina. That's not typical, but I want to emphasize that uh, it's very uh, unusual to have a culture bisected by such a major mountain range. The Chigmet Mountains are substantial and the Alaska Range to the north are substantial. There's only a few passes that uh, go through, four that I, four that were regularly used anyway, and they are arduous, uh, it's an arduous journey. Um, so uh, in many ways the western Denina, that is be the Iliamna and inland dialect people have a slightly different history than the Kenai Peninsula and Susitna area, uh, Denina, not, not also uh, exacerbated by the fact that the bulk of uh, western population is now in this Cook Inlet Basin area. Uh, the important villages are for the upper inlet, Tionic, Alexander Creek, Susitna, Croto Creek, Montana Creek, Kanik, and Aklutna. Pedro Bay and Old Iliamna were the important villages down on Iliamna Lake. And Dalton, Lime River, uh, Lime Village, and Stony River uh, were important in the inland area. The Seldovia dialect is now extinct. And in Kenai, the Kenai, Tionic, uh, or Outer Inlet, Nikiski, Custitan, Polly Creek, and the other villages now abandoned were important uh, in uh, that area. So we want to distinguish between uh, terms culture, tribe, and language. Uh, culture, uh, people, group of people who share a territory normally, language, material, culture, and social and political organization. A tribe being uh, used more from Alaska Native terminology, uh, roughly equivalent to culture. And then language is, a, is of course, a linguistic term. If I could speak a little bit, oops, I skipped one here. Uh, these are the Denina regional bands. Uh, band identification would have been important to the Denina uh, and they would have known which band they were part of. The band identification probably started to drop out in mid-century, mid-20th century. Uh, but people still roughly uh, tend to associate with uh, um, various bands, although some have disappeared, like the Mulchatna is no longer occupied by Denina, although it's used by Denina. This is a map of the Kenai River area showing the place names uh, of the Kenai River area. 
This is uh, part of a website that you will be directed to um, and you can find it easily by searching for Kenai Denina language and click on the territory um, and place name section of that and this map would be there and you could click on for example Schlockhock and up would come a picture of Schlockhock and uh, Peter and you can click on hearing Peter Kalifornsky say the word in Denina and see its uh, translation into English so we'll use that a lot and I hope you go there uh, and uh, Here's a few other images of it. Here's the Kasilov River area. This is a work in progress, but uh, uh, it takes a long time to get the pictures, get the audio, get, get build the website, but I hope you appreciate it. Um, for the Kenai Peninsula, uh, often the name, is it Katnuatana or Kanaitsi? Katnuatana is the traditional name. Kanaitsi uh, is derives from uh, Russians, of course, the Aitsi. Uh, some one thought is that it derives from Kinayut, which is an Aleutic word for people of the Kenai River. Uh, Ayut meaning similar to Aitsi in Aleutic. Uh, the Ken, however, is still not explained, and it almost certainly derives from the stem Ken, which means a flat. So here's Kenai. Uh, I'll cross the on this flat. It's actually a wave cut terrace of the Cook Inlet and was built on there. So people of the Ken, people of the flat would be what Kanaitsi means and it's used by the Kanaitsi tribe today of course as their primary name. Number of organizations in Cook Inlet um, uh, we want to speak to that diversity a little bit. There are land claims, Alaska Native Land Claims uh, Settlement Act organizations. There are Indian Reorganization Act tribes. There are nonprofits, and there are individual tribal councils. So they're not all the same, although oftentimes members of one are members of the other. So the Anxka corporations, of course, there are regional corporation. Cook Inlet uh, region is one of the dominant. Uh, re, uh, 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 corporations of the area. But within Denina Territory, the Bristol Bay Native Corporation, Callista and Chugach Native Corporation are also uh, in Cook Inlet as well, the latter not being Alutic, not Denina. Uh, the village corporations then function uh, not under, but in addition to the uh, regional corporations, and these are the major village corporations, and on the right-hand column is the primary affiliation. Here's a few maps just pulled off the web. Uh, this one on the right is the Cook Inlet Regions area, and this, of course, is the regional corporations of Alaska. Here's some land ownership for the Southern Peninsula. Um, certainly one of the major pieces of legislation is the Alaska Native Claims Settlement Act, which has uh, shaped a lot for late 20th century and will for the 21st century shape a lot about uh, the um, economic primarily activities in Alaska. In addition, there are Indian Reorganization Act tribes. This was authorized in 1934 under President Roosevelt as part of the New Deal and conceived by John Collier who was his Bureau of Indian Affairs chief and authorized sovereign or semi-sovereign status as long as certain criteria were met. Primarily uh, initially a blood quantum level um, by membership uh, which is controversial and being redefined today and the group had to have a um, plurality election process uh, to elect bylaws and much of the proceedings are done by that plurality. It's a uh, modern piece of legislation is probably the main basis for the concept of Indian country. What it effectively does is allows tribes to receive and spend federal funds for health, education, elder care, courts, and so on. The Kanaitsi tribe IRA uh, was organized as an association in 1962 and organized as an IRA tribe in 1971 and now the name tends to be used the sovereign nation of the Kanaitsi. 
Native village of Tyonic was established in 1936 as an IRA tribe very early, and the Seldovia village tribe is also an IRA tribe. There may be other tribes now. Um, they can get defined by uh, and um, by federal authorization. There are numerous non numerous nonprofit organizations. The Alaska Federation of Natives is well known. Cook Inlet Tribal Council is part of Siri as a nonprofit. Uh, the South Central Foundation, likewise, Siri Foundation, Chugachmute, all our foundations, nonprofits organized within the larger for profit um, regional corporations. And last, there's a number of village councils which function within the village. They are neither IRA tribes nor are they uh, uh, ANGSCA related organizations and they function to make decisions within the uh, traditional areas of these villages. So that's a quick overview of terminology and territory and area. Uh, please do go to that website uh, search for Kenai Denina language, uh, go to the tri territory and place name section, click around, hear the, uh, hear the terms, hear the words said, and uh, some of the, your project, your, one of your assignments will be to do a map based on a lot of the material that you'll find in that particular website. And that map is posted on um, uh, on uh, Blackboard.